Okay, Darren, you say actually tough times. There are five reasons in the toughest times why that's the best time to take advantage. Take me through them. Yeah, it's not just a mindset. I mean, fundamentally, for an ambitious entrepreneur, this is your time of opportunity. Why? Tell Here's me why. why. Me. Number one is that there's less competition in the marketplace. You know, the, the weak, the lazy, and the lucky have been cleared out. Number two, uh, it's cheaper to, to grow your business. The marketing noise is down, and so you can advertise for less money, mm -hmm. and, and you can make a, a bigger statement uh, faster and cheaper. Number three, the talent pool has been liberated. There's an amazing talent pool out there that uh, uh, is hungry and will be grateful to a growing company. Okay. And the last thing is uh, it's easier to establish a beachhead. If you could be successful in this market right now, when the market turns, and trust me, this too shall pass, you'll grow right along with it. Let's move on to our emails now. The first one comes from Naomi. She says, I want to go full time with the company, but I fear not having a paycheck every two weeks. I work for the government. I know I can really make the company go farther. We're heavily vested in contracts from the government, which has allowed us to continue. When is it time to take the jump? Make sure that your, your part time business replaces your full time income before you go, or if you're going to make the leap, make sure it's only 20 to 30% of your, of your wealth that is at stake, right. and maybe get enough contracts in place with your company that it will guarantee your cash flow going forward, or at least enough that you can factor those contracts and replace your full-time income. When you take your experience and you give agents who are trying to do very much what you did, uh, what kind of advice do you give them? Well, it, it's to be proactive. But the first thing is, is, is uh, the national economy, what's going on uh, in world affairs, uh, even your industry does not have to become your personal reality. Now, every month, billions of dollars of real estate are being sold. All you need is a little bit of that, and you're going to make a fortune in real estate, selling real estate. Now, if you're buying real estate, there's never been a better time. The old adage is, is to you know buy low and sell high. The only time you make money in real estate as an investor is when you buy it. So now is the time to fill your monopoly board because this is the time of, of great buying opportunities. And like the other guests, have a long-term approach, but you get 10, 15 years out, what you did today to secure real estate will make you a fortune in the next decade to come. And do you address the tough economic environment in your pitch? Uh, yes, uh, how you're solving a need, how your product or service is going to solve a need in the current marketplace, I think is a great uh, position to put your pitch. Darren, I always believe people, people, people. You never go wrong investing in people. But in these tough times right now, Pete, this guy wants to be proactive. Is there any kind of good litmus test he can do as far as how much to hire, when to hire? If people are producing, you know, now's the time that you, there's incredible talent out there. Go get the best talent you can get in this economy and pay them well. They will serve you. The, the, the speed of the business is going to be the speed of the people. You can't overinvest in your people. Let me just give you an analogy. Imagine I put a 30 foot plank here on the floor and I said, if you walk the length of this plank, I'll give you $100. Would you do it? Yes. So if I put that 30 foot plank between two 100 story buildings, would you now do it? I'd have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going to get me. <laughs> if one of those buildings were on fire and your three and six year old children were on the other side, I'd run across it. You'd run across it. Now, same risk, same, same variable, but the reasons why have changed. And so that's what setting goals is all about, is getting clear on, on what are your reasons why. I wrote a book that, that, that talks about the very simple basics of how to turn goal setting into goal achieving, and then how to, how to stay on course uh, throughout the year, and how to avoid the, the reason why 95% of the people who set goals end up failing, uh, and how to get around those landmines in the process. change is a good thing, but if your customers don't want it, look out. Let's turn to this week's board of directors to get their take on this. Darren Hardy joins us here again. He's the publisher of Success Magazine. So I think this is a particularly relevant topic right now because a lot of people are going to be looking for ways to increase their revenue as times are tough. Right. So, so how can you tell, Darren, if your idea is a good idea or a bad idea? I think the biggest lesson for entrepreneurs uh, in this is is spend more time finding out why your customers buy mm -hmm. than you uh, sit around thinking about what you can sell them. If you truly know what it is that they're interested in, um, you'll know where to take the business. They need to lead you in the direction that the business goes because you need to match the value enhancements with the values of your particular customer base. I'll give you an example. Uh, we thought with Success Magazine, we knew why people wanted to read it. We did a survey and found out it was very different than we thought. So we changed our marketing and we changed some of the editorial that we focused on and our subscription growth doubled 
because we asked what the customers wanted rather than projecting and guessing and supposing what it is we thought they wanted. Darren, big success uh, magazine, Risk 101. Nothing great was ever achieved without somebody taking a risk. Okay, speaking of which, Dustin's got a problem. He writes, I'm married with three children and I'd really like to make more money. My manager was just fired and I want his job. I've been doing all his work to prove that I'm right for the job. Is this the best way to go about getting the job, Darren? I say always do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future. Go to whoever is going to be making the, the hiring decision and tell them you want the job and ask them what it's going to take to get it.